just happened to be that Eric wanted a Kit Fox 4 powered with a Viking engine, so we we kind of brought out our 90 horsepower. All right, so now we did a Kit Fox, and this time it's a Kit Fox 4. Let's run through the installation procedure. We do have a makeshift panel here. Of course, we're only concerned with the engine. That's what we do. Uh, there's the master. We're now installing a backup battery right here because we're gonna have dual batteries. This airplane's gonna go into the boonies, so it's nice to have a second one, but that's what we're working on right now. So only the first one's active. Then we've got our alternator switch, fuel pump, fuel pump, and the instrument for the Viking view. And here's the Viking view, uh, showing us low voltage right now because the engine's not running. Installation of the Viking view is straightforward on this airplane, like it is on all airplanes with the uh, <clears throat> Viking engines. Basically, you're gonna install the brain box, and then you install senders in the engine, and then you just run the pre-made cables between that and the engine. And then there's only one cable that goes to the back of the Viking view to tell it what to show to the pilot, namely you. Now, let's take a general look at the installation from the outside. We're actually sitting quite high in this Kit Fox 4 because Eric, the owner, has <clears throat> put the big time gear on it. It's way up in the air and it's really kind of in, in for, reinforced the sides here and the airplane's going together. It's going to be uh, heading out west. They're going to do a lot of fun with this airplane. As you can see, it's got a nice tall stands to it. We had the airplane here now for a week to do the installation of the engine and to make a mold over here from which we could make cowlings for the airplane, which turned out really nice. That was the top cowling you just saw. And then the bottom cowling is over here. It's a really a nice setup. We were able to get a nice streamlined look to it. As you can see, the bottom is kind of squared off a little bit there. And that's in order to um, house the radiator that is at the bottom of the firewall. The radiator is basically set up in a way where when the cowling is on, you don't see it. Uh, you don't really see the cooling system at all except for the one little inlet that allows the air to enter. Now let's take a look at the individual systems that were installed with this Viking 90 engine. If you have a Kit Fox, four, three, whatever, that will fit, the, you know, same size as this one, it'll fit the 90 engine. First thing you're gonna do is grab your engine mount. This engine mount's a little bit different than a production one because it was the first one we made. They all gonna have this star-shaped aluminum piece in the back, and that's just to uh, bridge into the center with something structural from the four original mounts. And it gives us a nice solid mount here in the middle top of the three cylinder engine. You're also gonna mount the bottom, which is a triangulated mount that comes down to this bottom center support of the kit foxes, which is kind of standard kit fox. And then uh, you're gonna mount to the top two mounts, which come down and hold the back of the engine. The one thing that's different is this mount has two extra pieces on each side, which on production mounts will tee onto here and the whole mount will be one piece. The radiator system, you install that by hanging it to the bottom rear of the engine mount to the same bolts. And the radiator is the same width as the airplane. It has a box on it, which collects some of the air or all of the air, as much as you want or need. And then all of that is inside of the cowling for that nice streamlined look externally. So you can see when the cowling is on, the radiator would sit right here in the back. So you won't see it from the outside. 
very efficient system and will pick up some speed for this kind of an airplane. We installed the Viking View as we were talking about and with that comes installing a gearbox, temperature probe. We install the coolant temperature probe. We install an oil pressure transducer. And we also install a fuel pressure transducer. Right up in here. Let's take a look at the fuel system. We've got one hose coming down from the left and the right wing. They come down, they're pre-filters for those with quick disconnects. And then we just drain right into the top of the header tank. Header tank is just mounted very simply with a crossbar out of aluminum, just an L angle, and just teed to the original structure of the airplane. Very simple, took only a few minutes to do. Underneath, we've got our fuel system, which means traditional Viking header tank mounted. We actually did throw a little piece of corrugated loom here, which is kind of, which the pumps uh, sit on if they were to slide in the ADAL clamps up there. There's a few wires here. There's two from each pump and we've got some, uh, let's see, uh, from the pressure transducer right here. So basically we got one cable that comes with the Viking view and then we tee on to the pre-fabricated uh, plugs that go on the fuel pumps. So you got two, four, kind of like five wires or two, four wires and a, and a cable that runs back here. We did install some conduit into this airplane because there's very few airplanes that actually have a place to mount or route anything. So we did put some like one and a quarter inch aluminum tubes along the floorboards up front. Here's another fuel filter, which is the high pressure filter before we get up front. We also installed a drain on the bottom of the header tank. Now, if we follow this and we go up front, we can see our conduit right here and we put conduit over there in the corner and we follow that. And then the fuel hose basically we have to clear the spring for the rudder return. We have to clear some other things, but just goes through the footwell and then goes up to the engine right here. And we just corrugated and protected the hose with the high temperature loom and just ran it right behind the main intake manifold. That way we don't have to worry about safe tying it or chafing because it's protected. Now, as far as the throttle cable, and just put that through. We decided to run it like on the side here. And we did an S turn back here and came out in the traditional center mounting right here. Once the panel is in, then the Viking view panel will be part of that centered to the cockpit. Here's the ECU that runs the engine. It's been mounted. What you see here is a piece of eighth inch or 90 thousandths maybe, Lexan. And we just laid that across everything here uh, in the front behind the panel and just tied it down with uh, regular tie wraps. Just drill and tie in a bunch of places. And then of course we mounted everything else to that. Nice thing about it is you can kind of see right up through it and makes it, makes it kind of easy to, to do an install because you can see everything you're doing. A lot of what we did, we did with these, these rivets. Um, they're pop rivets, but they're for soft materials. And you might've seen them. They're all aluminum and they spread out like that. <clears throat> and they're designed for, for soft, soft uh, applications where you don't want to crack something. And um, there's a dual batteries. We got one here, we got one over there. Uh, in addition to that, we have our buses, we have our pass-through right here. It was a nice location right up front uh, or centered to the top because the harness that comes out of the engine or off the engine just kind of lays straight up there 
and it goes right back and right through. We also did our uh, power cable right from the starter. We have a power cable right there and we ran it and protected it very simply also just uh, against the engine uh, and with no special really ties or standoffs or anything because we protected the cable and we just ran it up to the alternator stud and then we continued it there and uh, we know the alternator vibrates quite a bit so we tied it right to this uh, alternator tension bracket immediately so we don't have any fractured um, cable right there. We did use welding cable, which is very soft, which also helps on that. And then we ran that up and through our pass-through as well. Now, we do have a gearbox venting bottle. That doesn't mean it should have gearbox oil in it. It's just a bottle that when you put eight ounces in these gearboxes, five to the top of the side class and three, three additional for good measure, then uh, there's a possibility of a little bit of mist coming out through the back vent on the top. So you run that to that bottle and then you don't get any gear oil on anything. And you can run more gear oil in the gearbox. It's a really nice system. The setup with the Kit Fox here was not to have any a prop extension, which of course took a little bit of work to get the cowling to look nice that close to the gearbox. But it really worked out nice and we're proud of it and, and we really like it. The um, coolant temp probe of all things is very little room there. So we actually shorten it just a little bit and it fits in there like the original. That's the coolant temp that goes to the ECU, not the Viking view. Exhaust header, very standard for the Viking 90 with a muffler that just has a bracket on the side, bolts to the engine, has a rivet right here so it can float just a little bit, and an extended tailpipe that is rosette welded going down below the airplane. This area is a little bit tricky. The initial thought was actually to run this cooling line straight behind the engine, but once the prototype cooler was made, the, the uh, nice uh, brackets we added to it, prevented us from doing that. We might do it differently next time where we can actually have this just run straight across to the other side of the engine. But as you can see, we had to kind of do a little finagling coming up here, which also worked out really nice. Um, if you're doing this, uh, basically take a look at what we've got. It's a 90 and a 45 and another 90, and that sneaks it right behind the engine. And once you get to this side, you're gonna be coming forward and then another 90, and then up to the uh, exit of the cylinder head for the coolant. And then the other one, very simple, uh, right out of the radiator, up to the inlet of the thermostat with two 45s and a joiner in the middle. That's an easy one. Here's the oil cooler, which on the 90 is a liquid to liquid cooler. So it's a filter oil filter the with a cooler underneath it and that's already obviously pre-plumbed from viking so you don't have to do anything with it other than just understanding that there's coolant that run through this oil cooler to cool it coolant as in engine coolant now <clears throat> here's the air filter you need to cut a little bit of a hole in the cowling for that to get fresh air through it up front the um, area up in here has been completed. We've got dual buses, electrical buses, positive and negative. We got the two contactors for the dual batteries and we got the two batteries. And then of course the wire diagram on our website shows exactly how that goes together. Oil dipstick is right here. Nice engine with individual coils, one for each cylinder. There's your fill for your gearbox and there's the fill for the coolant. We'll mix this video up with a little bit of some shots of the airplane running with the propeller in place.
So, um, yeah, why? Why, uh, you know, such an old design as the Kit Fox 3 and 4, and why even bother doing days and days of sanding to make a cowling and a plug and a mold and an engine mount and getting it all running and fitted and all that? Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of advantages for us. You know, there's a lot of those planes out there. Of course, we'd like to uh retrofit a lot of them after all this work and 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 uh, obviously we think that what we came up with was a was a success one one kind of neat thing about this whole thing is a three cylinder engine is a smooth running engine but it's it's never going to be as smooth as a four cylinder of course unless you you know in flight it will be but at idle it won't just 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 the nature of a three cylinder engine but it has a, a lots of other advantages it's powerful it's it's lightweight and, and all that. But a pleasant surprise, you know, for us is that normally we work on sheet metal airplanes and now bolting it to a um, tube and fabric, uh, steel tube, 4130 steel tube aircraft, the engine is really, 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 really smooth running. So it's, it's just kind of like, wow, like, wow. And um, it comes about because the, obviously the steel fuselage is so much more forgiving when it comes to a little bit of uh, resonance coming off of a three-cylinder engine. With it. Eric, of course, the owner of the airplane is, uh, even if it won't be ready for this uh, 2020 sun and fun, um, it might, you might be able to see it down there because they'll bring it down as a static display if it's not ready to fly. And as you can see here, it's already, uh, really, as far as our part of it, Viking, we have now Kit Fox 4 firewall forward kits, you know, so you can already get an engine mount and a cowling and all the stuff that you see in these videos, all your electrical supplies, fuel supplies, and the, the header tank and the mini header tank, the filters, all that stuff is already available. So it's kind of, you know, here we are again, uh, doing a complete firewall forward for an airplane that there's lots of them out there and that people really love. Uh, you can pick up a Kit Fox 4, a used one maybe, if, if that's something that you're interested in and put a Viking 90 horsepower and bring it into the, the 20th century and have a beautiful airplane. Or maybe you already have one and you got a 582 in it with a really low TBO and the seven plus gallons an hour fuel burn and put a 90 and uh, get yourself down to like three and a half, four gallons an hour and quiet and a long, um, you know, quiet propeller like this 75 inch Duke that this little thing has on it that you can see in the videos. All in all, a, a, a really, really great thing. And uh, as far as the ec economics behind it, if you have a Kit Fox 3 or 4 or uh, you want to buy one, a used one, and then you add the, the Viking uh, four-stroke to it, you can have a great airplane for very little money. But this has got to be expensive, right? Well, it's all relative. <laughs> you know, for us, uh, anything that's more than five bucks is expensive because we have a business where we, we make our livelihood in aviation. So... But, um, so the expenses is obviously relative, but here's the thing. You cannot do any better than what the, the engine you're seeing in these videos. You're not actually taking any kind of compromise as far as quality or sound or horsepower or anything. You're, you're basically, you know, just believing in and going for, uh, the absolute latest in automotive technology with a propeller up front. And clearly it's been working. We've, uh, Viking has sold thousands of engines and and this is our latest engine so this little 90 with a heavy duty gearbox and this propeller on it and just listen how quiet it is how easy it starts and how nice it runs uh, so surely you could be part of this whole uh, club uh, using our engine and the, the Kit Fox airplane and fly out in the boonies bring a tent have fun uh, and it could do it for like, you know, you buy an airplane for whatever you can buy your plane for, or you have a Kit Fox with a 582 and you an upgrade to something a little bit more refined and quieter. And, and Alyssa can work with you for like $10,000 for the whole engine. Now, you're going to need, of course, firewall forward components. You're going to need an engine mount and you're going to need some coolers and, and, and a cowling and a propeller and spinner and things. But, but the basic engine, you know, figure like, 10 grand and then add all those other items to it 
and you're going to be so far ahead of other choices and be able to have all this fun reliably and be part of the community that does all this. You know, so we're just kind of doing our normal thing, uh, fitting engines to Zenit aircraft and, and sending them up to power chute and doing Sonics and all that. And then here comes Eric from uh, Aviator Paramotors here in Florida. And uh, he just wants to finish this Kit Fox 4 with our engine. And he wants to promote us as a company and he wants to promote himself for his um, paramotor business. And, and when you go to Sun and Fun and you've seen these really neat paramotors and they do shows down at the uh, ultralight area, that's him. That's what he does. And um, he, uh, he flies these and he teaches you how to fly these paramotors. And it's kind of really something that I, I didn't even really pay much attention to, but it's a really nice sport. Uh, something, um, you know, you can get classes and anybody can do. But more so <clears throat> for us, uh, he brought this airplane here and we, we kind of worked together. He put this nice uh, tall landing gear on it and the big tires and we got our, our 90 uh, four stroke on the front with a big 75 inch prop. And I, I think it could be like something that can really show off his business. It can show off what we can do in our business and we can together show how you can fly for very little money yet not uh, sacrifice anything. You'll have, you know, high quality four stroke engine. You'll have a really nice reputable airplane with the Kit Foxes. And, and um, as you know, from, you know, the YouTube uh, channels, there are people that are flying these uh, out west and they're extremely popular and the people that are flying them are very popular and they go everywhere with them and and um, you know there's just like a whole cult thing following these airplanes and so um, you know if you want to do that and you want to be part of that kind of a thing uh, we have the engine for it this particular airplane is going to be part of that whole thing uh, you'll see a lot of YouTube videos of this airplane flying and landing off airport and uh, just having a ball.